First of all, thank you so much for coming. I'm Laurie Anderson, I'm the Executive Director of SFU's Vancouver Campus, and I'm very pleased you're here today. I want to acknowledge that we're here gathered in the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, the Squamish, the Muscan, and the Slavitude. Thank you so much for coming, and this, this is a timely opportunity to reaffirm our values as a university. And to do that, please join me in welcoming our President, Andrew Pettit. Well, thank you very much, Lori. You know, I was saying to Lori, I stared before that uh, we have eight people turning up. <laughs> wow. Um, it's just great to see you. Thank you so much for, for coming out, uh, just as we did on the Hill last week. Uh, clearly, the community is very much together in our concerns. And more than anything, it's important that we, I think, have that sense of community and reaffirm our shared values and together demonstrate our commitments to diversity, equity, and inclusion at these times. And I must say, it's just been really heartening to me to see the kind of response that uh, has been generated by, uh, not only by my original message, but by a lot of the, the sharing tweets, support, your messages, videos, uh, all of which have, I think, come about to demonstrate that we really are, as our buttons say, we are all SFU. And as SFU, we know that in these troubling times, it's important to show our solidarity and our support for those who justifiably feel threatened by recent events. And I believe universities have a very special and important role to play in advancing human rights, freedom, and international understanding. When nations move to erect walls, when politicians deny truths, when they target people based on their religion, ethnicity, and nationality, universities have a particular responsibility to push back, to respond. We do that by building bridges and strengthening civil society. We do that by promoting evidence-based dialogue and deliberation on issues of public policy. And we do that by supporting religious freedom, social equality, and cross-cultural engagement. And SFU, I mean, SFU wouldn't be SFU if we didn't have that commitment to those values. We are truly, and so proud to be, a globally engaged university. 20% of our student population comes from around the world. Uh, we welcome faculty and staff and visitors all the time from other countries. And they bring huge enrichment, mm -hmm. huge understanding, huge knowledge to us. We benefit from that internationalization and of course, many of uh, our own students from, from Canada go and travel abroad as do our faculty members and staff members. This is a global environment, and we as a university are so proud to be part of fostering global understanding and cross-cultural engagement, not only here, but around the world. And we're proud to be committed to nurturing and maintaining a supportive and welcoming environment for all those international visitors, and most particularly, I would say, for our international students many of whom feel particularly threatened by recent announcements and recent events. So this is a commitment I know that we share, and that's why I'm so pleased to see you here today. It's shared not only by university administration, but by faculty. I see faculty and staff here. I see students here. I see people who are uh, engaged with the university from the community. Um, and I've heard from so many of you your concerns and your support for us as a community to pull together. So I want to uh, introduce someone who's going to speak on behalf of students, and that's Prab Bassi, who's here as a representative of the Simon Fraser Student Society. Uh, Prab, please come forward and share your thoughts uh, on this occasion. and say to the people. I would also like to thank President Petter and the SFU community for coming together today to show that we are all together, engaged, and ready. On behalf of the Simon Fraser Student Society, I would like to express our sincerest condolences to the people who are affected by the U.S. travel ban. Fans of horrific events
events that have taken place on the east coast of Canada. The fatal shooting that occurred in Quebec are personally quite upsetting for me since I was I lived and grew up in Montreal. The pain and loss experienced by the Muslim community is simply not fair. No one should have to suffer such tragedy regardless of race, religion, or ethnicity. However, in the face of such tragedy, I have seen our SFB community come, come together in a very inspiring and powerful way. We have become stronger and louder and prouder than we have ever been before. And it goes to show that we will not let our differences divide us. We stand together today and fight hatred today, tomorrow, and every day after. Furthermore, I would like to thank the various clubs and student groups for coming together and supporting each other, and our diverse community, co community that is known as SFU. Once again, we are all SFU. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. And uh, I must say, the Graduate Student Society, the Undergraduate Student Society, many student organizations, the uh, Faculty Association, uh, unions representing staff, uh, it's amazing to see how people have really come together and really want to make it clear that we as a community are not going to be thrown off our commitments by events that are happening elsewhere in Canada or indeed around the world or south of the border. Now, one place in which uh, I think the events of, uh, of the last few weeks, both in Quebec City uh, and also uh, in the United States, have been particularly uh, felt, has been in our Interfaith Center. And I would like to ask Victor Thomas, who is the director of our Interfaith Center, to come forward and share a few words uh, from his point of view. Victor. As the uh, head of the Interfaith Center, I really want to express my gratitude at the outpouring of love and support for many of the students, staff, and faculty who have been most affected over the last two weeks. Uh, you're standing in solidarity with those singled out for not entering into the U.S. and those affected by the Quebec attacks at the mosque have been greatly appreciated and are righteous. Uh, the Interfaith Center surely is one of those diverse, inspiring places up at SFU Burnaby we have about 1,250 students who make use of the center weekly, uh, about 105 weekly groups. And right here uh, on this campus, we have a space also on the seventh floor with about 700 students using that uh, a monthly and making a place where they can receive support and practice their faith. The Interfaith Center is one of those diverse places on our campus, a space where practice is encouraged, where, where can we develop, question, integrate, and mature uh, in their faith and understanding while attending SFU. And international students make a large component of those who make use of interfaith services. Many directly affected by the travel ban, and Muslim communities affected by the Quebec attack. SFU through the center already has believed as being bold and proactive in providing space and openness uh, on, for those, uh, for everyone to find support in part of SFU. In times like this, I think we need to remember something Martin Luther King said. Darkness drives, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In this diversity, it has been my privilege and honor to see the outpouring of support and love for and amongst the faith groups in our center. Individuals demonstrate their love for their neighbors. Thank you for the love you've done. At SFU, instead of creating barriers, working from fear, we have an open, supportive community, creating opportunities for spiritual practice and discussion. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects these rights. Article 1 and 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights declares all human beings are born free, equal in dignity and rights, and they are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. And as SFU, we celebrate these rights, and we have a privilege to practice them freely. These freedoms are essential to the pursuit of knowledge, wisdom, and ultimately truth. Now more than ever, we need to have universities with courageous leadership, which is demonstrated here at SFU. And I call you all to start or continue to stand up for human rights, freedom of religion, conscience, and thought. Universities must and always have been spaces where ideas are openly engaged. 
where through respectful dialogue, debates, and research spaces that help inform and engage Canada and the world's future leaders. I echo the President's thoughts in that in the face of oppression and discrimination, universities have a responsibility to build bridges, to promote dialogue, support religious freedom to social equity and cross-cultural engagement. This is more crucial than ever before, I really believe. It is in the plurality of individuals, the freedom of their conscience, religion and ideas that the academy finds its strength. It is in that diversity that ideas are found, forged, and will not only shape all of us now, but I really believe will shape the future of nations and our leaders. And I'm so proud to say that this is who we are. We are together, all SFU, strong and free. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brad and Baker, for reaffirming our shared commitments to diversity, to equity, inclusion, and indeed to the value of love. Love is uh, a value we don't talk about enough in universities, but uh, I appreciate the, the fact that you have put it squarely on the table. It's an important value that we, we must commit to every day. And as you both mentioned, uh, these commitments become even more important and more critical in light of the shootings that occurred at the Quebec Islamic Cultural Center, which remind us that we as a country are not immune from intolerance. We are not immune from uh, some of the same threats that we see outside our borders. Uh, 19 people who were shot at that, uh, at that center, six of whom lost their lives. The victims were parents, they were civil servants, they were academics, many of whom had left their countries to come to Canada because they believed that coming to Canada meant they would seek better lives, and how tragic and ironic that that decision resulted in their death. Uh, we condemn this violence. We stand together in our commitment to counter intolerance, and our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families. And I would invite you to please join me in a moment of silence uh, in the memory of the victims.
Yo, get it next time. Kelly, you got me next.